welcome to Gold Coast Light Rail Science Tram, where we travel Queensland's first light rail system and discover the exciting science and engineering challenges that the project team have encountered to bring the system to life. Did you know Queensland's first contemporary light rail system will transport locals and visitors along a 13 kilometre track between the Gold Coast University Hospital and Broadbeach? But how does a tram work and how safe is their brake system? For more, let's hear from field reporter Curtis. Thanks Libby. According to my calculations, a total of 75,000 passengers per day can be carried on the Bombardier Flexity 2 light rail vehicle. Trams are the most energy efficient mode of transport and with an average of 1.2 to 1.4 people travelling in each car during peak hour traffic on the Gold Coast, that means one tram carrying 309 people has the capacity to take 235 cars off the road. So how do the trams move? I'm glad you asked, Curtis. The trams are powered by a closed circuit electrical system. The system draws electricity from six substations which change the strength of electricity from 11,000 volt power to 750 volt power DC, direct current. This electricity is then distributed to trams via the overhead line which is called a catenary. A catenary is a single wire about as thin as an adult's pinky finger, which will be hanging above the track by poles. The catenaries act as conductors of electricity in the tram system. The electrical energy is then transferred from the catenary to the tram. This energy is then transformed into kinetic energy via the electric traction motor which powers the gearboxes. The gearboxes transfer the kinetic energy from the traction motor output to the axle and finally through the wheels onto the rail, which makes the tram run along the tracks. This is how electric energy by transformation into kinetic energy makes the tram move. This is the same principle as an electric car or the electric system in a hybrid car. Every time energy is transformed to kinetic energy, it is then lost through the heat of the engine and the brakes similar to a car using energy when it accelerates. Electricity then closes its path through tram wheels and running rails toward the substation. It is called return circuit. Therefore, tracks make up part of the electric circuit. So trams use energy that has been collected from electric energy? Yes, that's right Curtis. Trams use electricity to move along the tracks to transport passengers to their destination. Remember, electricity can be generated by many renewable and non-renewable means. It can be generated by heat, for example burning fossil fuels, wind, water or even solar energy, which are all renewable resources. So what makes the light rail system so sustainable? We caught up with Kevin from Bombardier Transportation to find out. Hi Curtis. Firstly, an electric train system has much better efficiency than a car. Also, the tram system is designed so that we give priority to the trams at traffic lights. This means we can actually minimise the acceleration and braking of the tram. The tram is most efficient if it can move with a constant speed. Similar to if you accelerate in a car, speed uses more petrol than if you are stationary. One special feature is that the trams are designed to share energy with each other if they are in the same section of the system. If the tram needs to brake, the first level of braking is the generative system, or electrodynamic brake as is known. The principle is quite simple. The traction system works now as a generator, whereby the kinetic energy from the wheels is transformed into electric energy. This electric energy is then sent back into the overhead line and can be used by another tram, which is travelling in the same section. By using sustainable practices, such as efficient energy usage, the Gold Coast Light Rail System will minimise local greenhouse gas emission by 114,000 tonnes in the first 10 years of operation. This is equivalent to charging 503 million iPods. Additionally, the tram system can use electrical energy generated by renewable means, such as solar energy or wind power. Cars don't have this capability. Thanks, Kevin. Why don't you look around your own home and see what you can do to decrease energy consumption? It may be just as simple as turning off the light in your room before you leave it. This will help to reduce energy consumption in your house and make it a more sustainable place. Back to you Libby. Until the next time we travel the Gold Coast Light Rail Science Tram, 
keep loving learning.